Okay, so we've seen an example, some simple examples of how to use the C++ vector class. We'll see some more examples in subsequent lectures. One question is, how do I learn what methods are available for a class? If it's a standard library, if it's a class from the C++ standard library, all that stuff is online. If you're using someone else's software, usually they produce documentation. If you want to learn about the C++ vector class or any of the classes from the standard library, you can just go to your favorite search engine, type in C++, the name of the class, the name of the library, and do a search. One great place is C++.com. So this tells you a little bit about what a vector is. It's a sequence container, it's random access. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the details. Some of this documentation is technical. I'm not going to cover C++11 extensions. I'm not going to talk about allocators. I'm not going to talk about iterators. Some of that stuff will be covered in later lectures. For right now, I just want to expose you to how uh, we communicate about methods present in a class. So let's, let's start by looking at the constructors we have available. And so here's the declaration of the default constructor. And I'm not, as I said, I'm not going to talk about allocators. And as you can see here, we actually can largely ignore this because this is a default argument. So whatever we're instantiating the vector to, that is going to be um, the type, and it will have some allocator. So we actually don't even have to worry about this. And what this does, as you can see here, is this constructs an empty container with no elements. And that's exactly what we saw in the um, previous video lecture. Uh, what they're calling a fill constructor, uh, which is the second declaration above, what it does is you specify some number of elements, and you can also specify a value, and it puts a copy of that value in each of the elements. You can also notice here that this second argument has a default parameter, value type. So if you don't specify a second argument, whatever the default value for that type is, it's used to uh, populate the elements of the vector. And then again, it has this default allocator, which we don't have to worry about. And then I'm going to skip the range constructor, and now we have a copy constructor. So if you have a vector, you want to make a copy of it, then you can use, one of the things you can do is use the copy constructor. And notice that this is relative, that this is easily identified as the copy constructor because it's, first of all, it is a constructor called vector. This is part of the vector class, and we're passing in a vector as an argument. So that's the the pattern for a copy constructor. Now if we go and look at some of the member functions, uh, we talked about the at method. You can see here that the name of the method is at. It, the parameter, in this case a value parameter, is a size type in. And in this case, size type is unsigned, an unsigned integer. And it returns a reference to the object at that location. And because it's a reference, we can use it for retrieval, but we can also use it as an assignment. So if we want to set a value at a particular location. And that's, that's how that uh, duality is achieved, is by returning a reference as opposed to a value. Another good member function is the clear method. So clear simply uh, has a void return type, it takes no parameters, and it removes all of the elements from the vector. And you get a vector with a size of zero. Another one is empty. So you can see that it returns a bool, it takes no arguments, and it is a constant method. 
and it's simply going to return true if the vector is empty. Um, so it's, you know, this is in contrast to clear, so after clearing a vector, empty will return true. This is a way that we can inspect the vector. So you can see that there are a lot of different methods here. We just don't have time to go over all of them. Another one is operator equal. We saw this with the time class. And what they've done here is they've overloaded the memberwise copy operator here for the vector. So you can um, assign one vector to another. So this is a lot like the copy constructor, except you can use this on vectors that exist. They have also overloaded the index or subscript operator. This is equivalent to at. You can see that at, that they mention at in the documentation. And so again, what it does is it takes size type in as a parameter and it returns a reference. Now one thing that at is doing is at is doing some bounds checking here. So you can read this documentation. It says it has the same behavior as this function, except that the at method bounds checks and it signals that the requested position is out of range. I'm not really sure why this one doesn't also signal if something's out of range, but um, you know if if you're worried about iterating beyond the range of the vector, then maybe you should be using at instead of the overloaded operator. Pop back is a way to remove the last element. Usually, you know, you can think about the end of the vector or the back of the vector. So what this does is this removes the last element. Now notice that it has a void return type and there's no parameter, so all it does is it removes it and there's no way to actually get the last element that you've just removed. So you have to use other member functions to do that. Another useful one is pushback. We'll see examples of that. And what this does is this simply adds a new element. So you can see here that you pass in um, a constant reference to a value. So again, remember that we pass in constant references because the elements that we might be storing in the vector could be large. So we pass in a reference and then it pushes back, it adds it as the last element, and then of course it increases the size of the vector by one. It's also possible to resize vectors. So let's say, for example, if I start off with a vector of size 10 and I realize I need a larger one, I can use resize. Simply pass in the new size of the vector, and then there is an optional argument uh, if you increase the size of the vector, then this optional argument uh, determines what values go in those new positions. And if you don't specify one, then the, defa the default value for the type uh, is used. Size simply tells you how many elements are in the vector. It's really good for iterating. Uh, we'll see examples of that. There's a way that you can swap the elements of two vectors. So there's a swap method. Notice that we're passing in a reference parameter here because we're changing the vector that the swap that we're calling the swap method on, and then we're passing in another vector. And of course, we're changing the elements of the vector x, so it has to be a reference parameter. There are also some non-member overloads, so instead of implementing overloaded relational operators as methods, they've implemented them as function templates. Effectively, this, you know, it ends up syntactically looking exactly the same uh, as it does if, you, if these were overloaded methods, but you can see that they've overloaded the equality operator the inequality operator less than, less than, equal to, greater than. So this lets you compare uh, two vectors to see if they're equivalent or less than. And the semantics of these operators are described here, for example. So 
one of the things that it does is it starts by comparing the two sizes. And clearly if two vectors are of different size, they can't be equal or they, they might be uh, not equal. Okay. So that's just a quick tour of some of the methods for the vector class. And you can see that there's a lot of documentation here. So as you progress along and you learn about these new libraries and these new classes, you can study this documentation to learn about the methods, how they work, and then that will help you write software using these libraries.